Hello everybody. Uh, in the last uh, uh, video, I have discussed about UPS systems. Basically, why do we need UPS systems? What are the advantages in terms of the power quality? That also I have discussed in detail in the previous video. I also discussed about the various configurations of UPS systems. Uh, and also I discussed the building blocks of UPS systems. Okay, and uh, applications where exactly these UPS systems are used. That also I have discussed uh, in the previous video. You can go through it. It is uploaded already in, on the YouTube in the uh, KLSJIT YouTube channel. All right. Now I would like to um, take further part of it. And before going further, let me revise briefly that what I covered in my previous video lecture. However, if you go on, you know, want to take in detail, if you want to study in detail, you can please go through my previous video lecture. Okay. All right. Um, in my previous video, I discussed why do we need interrupted power supply? Interruptible power supply is required basically because we have applications something like this wherein we need continuous power supply. In the previous you know, class or previous video, I have discussed that in detail, particularly in the hospitals, in the medical care intensive units, continuous power supply is required because most of the equipments are operating on electricity. Just to give an example is a ventilator, okay, oxygen pump. It requires continuous power supply for the patient. Suppose if there is no electricity, it cannot work, isn't it? So we require continuous power supply. Just I have given one example, many examples I have quoted in my previous video. Similarly, it is required in the chemical plants, in the chemical plants, because a lot of processes involved, maintaining pressure, maintaining temperature, composition, everything happens you know, uh, all entire process is automated. So even if for a second, if supply goes off, the entire slot needs to be rejected. This is what I have already explained in detail. So I, would, I will not go in detail. So it is required in chemical industry. It is required in IT industries because a lot of computer installations are involved. Even for a second, if they, you know, uh, the, the supply goes off, you know that, right, uh, it, it loses all the data. So particularly when, when uh, you are working online, a lot of transactions are happening nowadays online. A lot of data is getting stored on the server. Even uh, interruption of say one second, the entire data will be lost. So that should not happen. And uh, hence UPS are mandatory uh, wherein we are having the, uh, the computer installations. And uh, surveillance and safety systems, you know that in surveillance and safety systems, basically you are observing something, you are monitoring something. And when you are monitoring or observing something, right uh, you have to uh, record each and every second data or capturing of image so even for a second if data i mean uh, electricity goes off the systems cannot work and somebody can enter into your uh, uh, critical systems so that should not happen as well so in detail these things i have already discussed and um, uh, you can go through my previous video if you uh, are interested in understanding this in detail. Okay. Now, what are the uh, different configurations of UPS systems? We have offline UPS system, online UPS systems, line interactive type of UPS systems. And uh, out of these three configurations, I will discuss only offline and online UPS systems. Of course, this I have already discussed in my previous video as well. So if you ask me what are the building blocks, main blocks of UPS systems, Main blocks of UPS systems are rectifier, inverter, battery bank, and static switch. These are the building blocks of UPS systems. Okay, so I will show that in terms of a block diagram. You can observe here in the offline UPS systems. You can see these are the different different block diagrams. Okay, the, sorry, different blocks of the you know entire system. Okay, so here AC supply is available, and here is the load. So I need to supply continuous power to this load. So let me assume this load as a critical load. It's a critical load and I need to supply it continuously. So in that case, 
what i will do is i will keep one backup system and that backup system is nothing but a battery bank and you know what is the function of a battery bank what it will do battery bank basically it will uh, uh, store the energy whenever you are charging it in the charging mode it stores the energy and in the discharging mode it gives out the uh, energy okay however charging and discharging both should happen in the form of a dc okay so it can charge with the dc electric energy and it can use you out basically dc electricity okay so now uh, to charge the battery what we are having is a rectifier because available supply is ac this is a main grid available supply is ac and i needed to charge the battery with a dc supply and hence i have to convert that ac supply into dc supply so basically this ac supply will be converted into dc supply using the rectifier again there is a question of voltage matching voltage compatibility may not be there suppose if my ac system is of 220 volts and if battery backup is of say 48 volts then it cannot operate i, I cannot directly apply it i cannot just simply uh, convert that available ac voltage into dc voltage and apply it to the battery bank not possible so i have to step down the voltage so this step down of voltage may involve a transformer at the beginning only convert ac uh, say 220 volts ac to say 40 volt 48 volts uh, ac voltage with the help of a transformer and then convert it into a dc using the diode rectifiers and then apply it this is one configuration otherwise you go for sophisticated control rectifiers which can directly control ac to dc as well as they can change the voltage magnitude so from 220 volts to 48 volts and whatever dc voltage that i will get i will apply it to a battery and battery can be charged so here this rectifier is operating like a charger basically charger for whom it is operating charger for a battery next look at this output of the battery again whenever it is required to discharge the battery right output of the battery once again it is a dc so suppose thing that grid voltage is not available i need to supply uh, the load from the battery i cannot directly connect the battery output to the load because loads are designed to operate for ac voltage loads are designed to operate at ac voltage they cannot operate for dc voltage so what do i need what i should you know uh, do in the process i should convert that dc voltage into suitable ac voltage once again okay so hence the dc voltage will be once again converted into ac voltage again with the uh, you know suitable voltage change for example most of the loads are designed to operate at 220 volts and if the battery backup uh, you know voltage rating is say 48 volts i cannot con you know connect directly that 48 volts to load so what i should do i should convert that 48 volts dc voltage into 220 volts ac voltage so this is possible in the case of a uh, inverter block which is embedded with a, a chopper circuit inside basically a step up converter okay so in this way that output of the battery also will be converted into ac with a suitable voltage change and then it will be applied to the load so these are the important points you just remember here rectifier one important part on the input side of the battery which is acting like a charger and on the output side of the battery you have a inverter which is converting the dc voltage into ac voltage and look at this there is something called as a surge suppressor i have discussed in detail in the last my video what is surge surge is basically a very high amplitude voltage or high amplitude current which is appearing instantly surges are a kind of voltage fluctuations very high voltage appearing instantaneously suddenly in my supply voltage and such voltages if you allow it to flow to the load directly it may damage my equipment hence it needs to be suppressed hence it needs to be eliminated from the supply and how to eliminate that from the supply is you have a separate circuit which can identify abnormal voltage level that is the surge voltage level and it will eliminate that surge content from the input supply and make it pure ac voltage 
that ac voltage will be made available to the node so it is acting like a filter but what kind of filter is it is basically a voltage filter it is eliminating what high voltages okay so <coughs> this is one voltage filtering this is second one this is another filter which is provided basically what kind of filtering action taking place in this filter is a frequency filtering so whatever supply that what we get from the grid need not be pure ac voltage remember it can it consists of some unnecessary frequencies also like harmonic harmonic frequency or resonance frequency which are bound to be there or it could be a noise signal so if you allow that frequency to Uh, you know flow to the load if your load is a sensitive load because we are assuming that our load is a critical load it can be a hospital biomedical instruments which are very sensitive and they are sensitive to even frequency also in such case if you allow other frequency to get in into your supply it may or the loads may mal operate or they may get damage so that should not happen and hence uh, what we are doing is unnecessary frequencies what i mean by unnecessary frequency any frequency other than 50 hertz frequency i will call it as unnecessary frequency that unnecessary frequency whether it's a high frequency or low frequency band in particular high frequencies will be removed absorbed by the filter circuits okay it could be a, a, a high pass filter so low pass filter or even a band pass filter combination of the two so it will absorb the unwanted frequencies present in the input supply and pure ac voltage now which is not having any high voltage or any abnormal voltage which is not having any high frequencies okay pure ac voltage is now available to the load through this transfer switch basically it is a static switch basically and normally this will be in this particular position that means whenever grid supply is available ac is available right this switch will be connecting this upper path as shown in the next diagram okay you can see here here usually whenever ac supply is available ac will now flow through this upper path through the static switch it will be applied to the load that means when supply is available right it is connected to the load directly through this static switch so now grid is supplying the load as well as grid is now also supplying the battery what it is doing it is also supplying some part of the energy through the charger through the rectifier to the battery so now what is battery is doing battery is now getting charged up so it is operating in the charging mode so this is in mode 1 basically supply is supplying the load as well as charging the battery remember this path is not available this path is not available because switch is connected to this path it is not connected to this path so neither your inverter uh, no, your, your your inverter will not be active it is not operating okay so hence battery cannot supply in this particular mode okay now suppose think that there is a grid failure grid is not available grid voltage is not available suppose if grid voltage is not available that time you see it this particular path will fail it cannot supply the load now it cannot supply the load so what will happen as soon as there is a grid failure grid you know uh, supply goes off immediately it will be sensed by this transfer switch and transfer switch will now change its position from upper path to the lower path remember your battery has been already charged it is already charged so what it will do now what battery will do charged battery will now starts discharging that means it starts supplying the load so battery which is already charged now starts supplying the energy to the load through the inverter through the inverter so look at this this particular path has been now active so it is supplying through the inverter through the transfer switch to the load so even if supply goes off load is getting the energy but it is getting energy from battery backup so this is your mode to operation okay now can you guess merits and demerits of the ups systems offline ups system so look at this offline ups systems what it is basically doing is it is doing the filtering action it is providing you the uh, 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 interruption free supply as well as good quality power supply okay so <coughs> you can easily make out the merits 
and the demerits of the UPS systems, offline UPS system in particular. These are the merits and demerits. I have discussed all these things in detail in the previous video. You can please go through my previous video for this discussion. Otherwise, it is going to be a repetition once again in detail each and every point I have discussed. So, uh, let me not repeat this again. Okay. Similarly, we are having one more configuration, something called as an online UPS system. Look at the change in the configuration now. In the online UPS system, this rectifier and inverter is directly in the path between supply and load. This is the main change. Okay. So, let me you know explain how this is going to operate. Whenever supply is available, whenever supply is available, supply is flowing into the rectifier unit now. So, rectifier will convert that AC voltage into DC voltage. So, remember entire AC is getting converted into DC. Only in the mode 1 when supply is available, only this path is active and this path is not operating. That is why I have written normally off. So, this static bypass switch, this is basically a bypass switch. This is normally off whereas we have one more switch here in the main path. This is the UPS static switch which is normally on. Normally on means whenever AC is available. So, whenever grid supply voltage is available, this will be on whereas this will be off. Okay. Now, let us see when supply is available, the entire supply gets converted into DC. Part of that is used to charge the battery. Remaining is used is, is flowing to flowing into the inverter unit wherein that DC voltage is once again getting converted into AC and that AC voltage is now made available to the load through the UPS static switch. Now, what is the function or what is the, uh, the fun involved in the double conversion here? This could be the question in your mind, right? When, when, when uh, the AC itself is directly available, why I am not fading it to the load directly and why I am converting that AC to DC here and DC to AC once again, double conversion waste of energy waste of energy. This could be the doubt in your mind. But here, remember, the main important thing is loads, if they are very sensitive, if they are, you know, very sensitive to any kind of supply fluctuation, frequency supply, frequency variations, then filters alone are not sufficient. So, what we do is, if I convert that impure AC voltage into DC voltage, Look at this, what I have overcome. I have overcome the problem of frequency itself. So, even if there is any variation in the frequency, that frequency term gets abolished, it gets vanished. Okay? So, there is no question of frequency once I convert that AC voltage into DC voltage. Now, that DC voltage, I am giving it to the inverter. In the inverter, I have the flexibility of setting the voltage as well as frequency, remember, by controlling some parameters in the inverter block something like modulation index. I can set the frequency, I can set the voltage. So, now what do I do? Whatever DC I get from the rectifier, I will convert it into AC once again, but I will set the rating of the inverter as 220 volts, 50 hertz. So, what it will do now? It will produce the AC voltage exactly 220 volts in magnitude and 50 hertz in frequency and a pure sinusoidal waveform. So, all the variations are eliminated, variations in terms of uh, uh, the voltage, variations in terms of the frequency or even in the form of a waveform. So, any kind of variations, even if my vari voltage, if it is not purely sinusoidal, that problem also have overcome by converting AC to DC and it, again converting that into AC. So, what you will get is a pure AC supply, that pure AC will be now fed to the load. So, this is a situation, this is a requirement when your applications are very, very sensitive. Okay. So, now when supply is available, what is happening is this. Supply is feeding the load directly through this path as well as it is charging the battery. So, now look at the rating of the rectifier. Rectifier has to have, you know, rectifier rating will be quite higher here in this case. Why it, it will be higher? Why rectifier rating will be higher? Because it has to meet the load requirement. Load power also it is going to supply. 
as well as it has to charge the battery it has to charge the battery as well okay supposing that 1 kilowatt is the load requirement so your rectifier rating cannot be 1 kilowatt because it is supplying 1 kilowatt to the load as well as it is supplying the losses in the inverter it is supplying power to the battery as well so its size will be naturally higher in this particular configuration so i think now you can easily make out the merits and demerits of this particular configuration fine now let me go to the next mode this is what uh, that i have shown already in this particular uh, 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 block diagram here you can see when supply is available it is feeding in this way to the load it is also charging the battery and upper part is out of service now we'll go to the second mode in the second mode when grid voltage is not available suppose think that when grid voltage is not available when supply is not available in that case battery which has already stored energy that stored energy should come into the picture so as soon as supply goes off it will be immediately sensed by these two switches which are complementary in nature which are complementary in nature that means as soon as supply goes off the static ups static switch which was normally on now gets uh, disconnected remember sorry uh, which was normally uh, this you sorry uh, uh, extremely sorry um, yeah in the mode 2 as soon as grid supply goes off the battery battery starts supplying the energy battery starts supplying the energy now what will happen as soon as battery starts supplying the energy it is supplying through this particular path it is supplying through the same path once again but only rectifier is not there in the operation rectifier is not there in the operation because grid voltage is not available there so battery is supplying the energy it is converted into ac and uh, it is supplying the load absolutely no problem even if grid supply is absent so load is getting continuous supply still all right next the very important of this online ups system is this mode 3 operation mode 3 operation is what suppose if there is any problem in the ups system itself for example think that there is any fault in the inverter and if this uh, uh, inverter is not operating in that case load will not get any supply so this is another problem this is another problem so uh, that is also overcome in this online ups configuration even if there is any fault in the inverter immediately ups static ups switch will go off okay it will sense it and it will go off whereas static bypass switch which was normally off will now turn on so upper path will now get activated now you see load is getting energy but it is getting energy not from the battery rather it is getting it from supply so supply is feeding the load through the static bypass switch so path 2 gets activated path 2 gets activated so in this way it this particular configuration takes care of all possible ways okay and uh, it supplies the load continuously not only that it is also giving the good quality power supply no doubt this type of configurations in this type of configurations these two blocks are oversized and because of that this the the um, uh, uh, cost cost increases so it, this particular system is slightly expensive to be very frank okay so i think uh, you can make out the merits and the demerits of this type of system quite easily so anyway i have listed out and i have also discussed this in detail in my previous video you can just go through it so i hope now you can recall very easily what are the different blocks of the ups system and how do they function this was the only moto involved and hence i have recalled all the basics once again otherwise i need not have to uh, you know recall all these basics since i have covered it already in the previous video just to link with my previous video i have recalled this everything because this is very important as far as problem solving is concerned that means designing is concerned which block is operating what is the function right in which mode it will operate and where that system is present is it behind the battery or it is you know 
uh, after the battery so this is this is something which is uh, uh, to be remembered so hence i have recalled okay we'll go ahead with the important thing now how to design the ups system as far as designing ups system is concerned remember the performance of the ups systems mainly depends upon the performance of the battery system if proper sizing of the battery is not selected lifetime of the ups system is adversely affected it is bad, going to affect badly hence proper selection of the battery capacity is very very important for the successful operation of the ups system so we are going to concentrate upon the selection of battery for the ups system in this particular uh, uh, video okay so let us understand how to select the battery system and whenever i am talking about the battery system remember what type of batteries are used as far as uh, the inverter systems i mean uh, the ups systems are concerned basically we are using a lead acid battery we are using lead acid battery second one is nickel cadmium battery nickel cadmium battery third one is smf batteries what are these what are what do you mean by smf maintenance free battery super maintenance free uh, uh, sorry sealed maintenance free batteries smf means sealed maintenance free free batteries so there are three types of batteries that are usually used as a backup system for ups systems okay now however these ups systems you know their lifetime depends upon so many factors something like what is the rate of discharge what is the rate of discharge what is the temperature on what you know uh, temperature you are allowing uh, what is the temperature that you are allowing uh, to rise as far as the battery backup is concerned or do have you provided any kind of cooling so that is also very very important and uh, uh, yeah these are the two important things and finally one more is the density of electrolyte this is another important parameter so all these parameters will decide uh, the actual life of the battery actual life of the battery okay all right now how do i select the battery capacity is by using this particular relationship usually please remember batteries are specified battery size is expressed in terms of kv it is expressed in terms of kva and not kilowatt okay that means what is this kva it is a voltage sorry sorry battery size is expressed in terms of in terms of ampere hour ampere hour ampere hour means it is current and multiplied by so current multiplied by time so battery size is expressed in terms of ampere hour and not the kilowatt or kva nothing okay it is will be expressed in terms of ampere hour that means current multiplied by time okay so now for example if i say i have a battery i have a battery whose rating is say 10 ampere hour i have a battery whose size is 10 ampere hour this is the size of the battery and when this is the size of the battery battery if i am drawing a current of 10 ampere if i am drawing a current of 10 ampere then battery can supply for one hour duration suppose if i draw a current of say 5 ampere it can supply 5 ampere of current for say 2 hours so in this way 
battery size is very is going to play a very important role and hence this is required to be a vital discussion as far as ups system design is concerned okay <coughs> Okay, now let us uh, try to understand how do we uh, actually calculate the battery capacity? How do we calculate actually the battery capacity? The battery capacity in terms of kilowatt can be calculated by knowing load power. But most of the times load power will be mentioned in terms of kV. So how to convert that into the active power is multiply that kVA rating which is the apparent power with the power factor. We will be knowing what is the power factor of the load. So load kVA multiplied by power factor divided by inverter efficiency. Now why I should consider inverter efficiency? This is very very important because you see your battery is behind your inverter. It is something like this. Battery is behind your inverter and it is giving it to the load. I cannot alone consider the load power. Okay, for example, think that 1 kilowatt is the requirement of the load. I cannot select battery rating as 1 kilowatt because there are certain losses that are associated with the inverter. Inverter efficiency is not 100%. It can be 85%, 90%, 95%. Usually, the you know, efficiency of the inverter will be between 90 to 100. Okay, 90, 90 to 99, it cannot be 100% efficiency. So, there are some you know, losses involved in the inverter those losses need to be considered. Let me consider that there are 10% losses that are involved in the inverter. So, if the battery has to supply 1 kilowatt, it has to also feed the losses in the inverter, isn't it? I cannot give 1 kilowatt to the inverter. If I give 1 kilowatt to the inverter, 10% of that will be lost. The remaining will be available to the load. Isn't it? So, I am not feeding 1 kilowatt exactly. So, what I will do? I will select slightly more than 1 kilowatt. How much more? It will be 10% more. As far as losses, when I am considering losses of the inverter is concerned. And also remember that battery also has some losses. Battery also has some losses. Hence, battery losses are also be to be are, are also to be considered okay and if i consider battery losses also in that case once again i have to overrate the battery in this way the sizing of the battery is a engineering task it is not a easy task just like that i cannot select the battery size okay so hence in the relation you will find the inverter efficiency if i know inverter efficiency i will come to know if i uh, what should be the battery capacity okay Second one, you see, number of cells in the battery. You see, whatever battery I take, that battery will be having number of cells that are connected in series. For example, think that a battery is having um, something like this, okay, three cells. So, these three cells will be connected in series. This I have discussed already in the battery technology, okay, I am going to revise that once again. Okay, so these are connected in series internally. So these are the cells that are there in the battery bank, which are either connected in series or in parallel to meet the voltage and power requirements. Okay, think that for example, I have considered here a four cell, I mean sorry, only three cells I have considered and think that hmm, the battery rating is say two volts, sorry, six volts, six volts. Battery rating is, battery terminal voltage is six volts. What would be the voltage of each cell? What will be the voltage of each cell? Voltage of each cell should be 2 volts, 2 volts, 2 volts. And they are connected in series. 2 volts, 2 volts, 2 volts, they are connected in series, so as to have a 6 volts battery. Isn't it? Are you understanding what I am talking about? Similarly, we will be connecting these battery banks in parallel also to meet the current requirement. Okay, so this is a battery, you know, backup design. Let me not go into the details of that. So, I am going to calculate how many cells are there in a battery. So, if I know what is the minimum battery voltage level, for example, in this case, minimum voltage level is 6 volts. 
6 volts divided by what is the voltage per cell if I know that voltage per cell is 2 volts right 6 divided by 2 I will come to know that there are 3 cells that are connected in series in the uh, battery bank up ok. So, this is how we are going to calculate how many cells are there in a battery ok. Similarly, we can also calculate what should be the power rating of each cell. Power rating of each cell be can, can be calculated if I know what is the battery kilowatt. Think that battery kilowatt, kilowatt is a 1000 watts, 1000 watts divided by how many cells are there? How many cells are there? For example, if there are 10 cells, if there are 10 cells, 1000 divided by 10, that means 100. So, each cell will be having a rating of 100 watts. I am just giving you an example. So, in this way, I will come to know what should be the power rating of each cell, how many such cells are to be connected in series, etc. Okay, so this is how we are going to calculate the battery capacity. Alright, so in the similar fashion, let me discuss about the efficiency of the battery. Ha, see, efficiency of the battery can be expressed in terms of two terms. One is in terms of the ampere our efficiency, second will be in terms of the watt our efficiency. What I mean by ampere our efficiency, ampere our efficiency means how much ampere hours means current and what is the duration for which I have kept it for discharging. How much current it is supplying and what is the duration that is the ampere hour during discharge. Okay? So, what is the ampere hour it has supplied during the discharge divided by what is the ampere hour uh, input that I have given for charging. So, that gives you the ampere hour you know uh, efficiency. Remember this ampere hour efficiency will be somewhere around 90 to 95 percent, but uh, this has a drawback. This particular parameter has a drawback because you are not considering the voltage here. Whereas, voltage is an important parameter as far as battery is concerned. Suppose if I am drawing the high current from the battery, time battery terminal voltage will go down. That means think that I have a 6 volts battery and I am suddenly drawing a lot of power. That time this 6 volts will come down to say 4 volt. Battery voltage will be you know less and also that increases the temperature of the battery as well. So, because of that losses are more. Okay. So, hence this is not considering the voltage of the battery. So, this is not going to give you the exact efficiency figure of a battery. Okay. So, hence we have we are going to consider one more term which will consider the voltage rating of the battery in both charging as well as in discharging modes. For example, the whatever efficiency formula if you see now look at this average cell voltage while discharging. What is the voltage when it is discharging? Average not a instantaneous figure it keeps on changing on an average what is the voltage when it is discharging and what is the average voltage when it is charging. Ratio of that I am multiplying with a ampere hour efficiency then I am going to get what a watt hour efficiency. This will give you an exact efficiency figure of a battery system. So, if you use this formula and calculate most of the time the efficiency will work out slightly lesser maybe 70 to 80 percent 70 to 80 percent whereas this will give you the efficiency of 90 to 99 percent ok. So, uh, that that is the main reason and also this watt hour efficiency uh, changes as your voltage changes as your voltage changes particularly when if you are drawing suddenly very high current or if you are supplying very high voltage ok uh, for charging. So, that time this figure will surely change ok. Now, to illustrate how exactly uh, we will do this calculations ok. Let me take a, take a small example based on this ok. So, if you have any doubts please you uh, type it in the comment box and you can ask me the doubts. I will try to clarify that doubt I if possible in the comment box otherwise in the next video ok. Alright. Now, let me take a small example based on this for a figure for a UPS system select the suitable size of the battery that is the question select the suitable battery system which is having these specifications look at the specifications that are provided UPS rating is say 20 kVA. So, what is this in particular UPS rating is a 
load how much load that it can supply okay so it's a load power basically load power okay so output of the ups isn't it so load power how much is that it is uh, 20 kv 20 kv next backup time to what extent to what duration i need a backup so that is also very very important so backup duration it is given that i need a backup for say around 15 minutes of outage for 15 minutes of outage so backup time 15 minutes given in terms of minutes we should always convert that into hour remember okay next it is also given the, uh, the given you the efficiency of the inverter look at the inverter efficiency inverter efficiency at full load is around 85% so inverter efficiency percentage efficiency of the inverter it is given as 0.85 means it is 0.85 okay there is another parameter next type of the load is inductive is a inductive load and what is the power power is i mean uh, what power factor is lagging inductive lagging and uh, that power factor is around 0.8 so this is the power factor okay next 0.85 okay correct 0.8 yeah then what type of battery that is used in the system it is a lead acid battery lead acid battery they have used and what what is the voltage on each cell voltage on each cell is 1.75 volts per cell okay so cell voltage cell voltage cell voltage is 1.75 volts per cell okay then you have battery voltage see the battery voltage is changing between 147 volts to 190 volts okay depending upon the battery health or depending upon the amount of discharge depth of discharge so it is varying between 147 to 190 minimum voltage of the battery system is 147 and that is what i need to consider minimum battery allowable battery voltage okay minimum battery voltage so minimum battery voltage is around 147 volts all right and finally you, it is given that there are six cells in each jar okay so cells per jar is six so this is a you know a very important uh, data that is been given to us so how do i calculate the battery parameters to begin with first i will calculate battery power okay so how do you calculate battery capacity let me calculate battery capacity it is in terms of kilowatt you know and how that can be done it is nothing but load kva right load power in terms of kva into power factor of the load divided by divided by what is that inverter efficiency very importantly very good inverter efficiency okay so load kva is known what is the load kva how much is that it is 220 sorry 20 20 kva so 20 multiplied by what is the power factor power factor is 0.8 divided by what is the inverter efficiency inverter efficiency is 0.85 calculate this how much you are going to get just see you will get around 18.82 kilowatt this is the battery capacity you can just do the calculation and you can check the value okay once you know battery capacity you can calculate second important thing is number of cells how many cells are there in the battery number of cells in the battery backup now how do i calculate number of cells in the battery it is minimum battery voltage right minimum battery voltage minimum allowable battery voltage divided by voltage per cell correct so minimum allowable battery voltage is 147 and divided by voltage per cell is around 1.75 
volts correct so how much you will get around 84 so 84 cells are there which are connected in the battery bank okay now how many such jars should be there because in each jar how many cells are there in each jar there are six cells okay how many such jars are there and they are finally connected in parallel so as to meet the load power so number of jars so number of jars in the battery backup how i am going to calculate that number of jars in the battery it is a um, okay number of jars yeah it is given that totally there are how many cells number of cells divided by number of cells in a jar okay so how many cells are there how many cells are there how many cells totally 84 cells are there 84 cells and uh, that is divided by number of cells per jar per jar there are six cells so how much that will give you 84 divided by 6 it will be around 14 14 cells per jar so in a jar there are 14 sorry uh, in a jar there are six cells and how many such jars i have 14 jars i have in a battery bank which are connected in a parallel to meet the load power requirement okay now this is all about calculating calculating the battery power calculating number of cells calculating how many cells are there in each jar okay now let me calculate finally the cell power okay cell power or cell capacity or cell size cell size or cell capacity okay so what should be the size of each cell in that jar okay so how do i come to know that how do i come to know you know battery power what is the battery capacity 18.82 battery capacity divided by number of jars so battery capacity is 18.82 kilowatt divided by number of jars are 14 14 jars are there so what will be the power sizing or power rating of each you know cell is a 0.224 kilowatt this is a rating of each jar this is the rating of each jar that means there are 14 such jars which are connected in parallel to meet the load power and in that one jar there are six cells and each cell is having a battery voltage of 1.75 volts and its battery and its cell size is 0.224 kilowatt now look at the data sheet and calculate the and and find out what is the suitable rating of uh, the battery to be used okay so this is how in general we are going to calculate the battery system we are going to design the battery systems so few more numericals i would like to take up in the uh, next class okay second uh, you know there are two more numericals i would like to take up in the next class so if you have any doubts please write me that in the comment box right uh, and um, I will try to answer to your queries in the comment box itself. If not, if it requires some descriptive explanation, I will give that explanation in the next video. Thank you very much.